Hello, our loves. You've got Joanne and Elizabeth here with you. I got this question the other day and I was like, this is so good. And we really need to discuss this because I think it'll help a lot of you guys truly understand the energy that's at play. So the question is, you guys talk a lot about focusing on yourself and not focusing on your twin flame. What does that really mean like? What does it mean to bring all of the focus and energy back to you? And can you guys go in more in depth with that? And so, you know, Joanne, I brought this up to you this morning, like, ooh, we really need to make this because it really, it really is important, the difference. And so when I was thinking about this question, there's a very distinct energy that was at play prior to separation when I was in addictive energy. And even when I was in separation with my person, and even now, there is a distinct difference in what it means to focus on them versus focusing on you. And I want to give you guys some real practical examples so you can sort of understand and know if you are truly bringing the focus back to you or if you are still sort of lost in the thoughts and the mind and may not even realize it and how it may be affecting the dynamics of your connection. So this is what I mean. So prior to separation, when my person, even when he was living with me, he would be downstairs working. Me focusing on him was anything that he is thinking, doing, and feeling. And you guys hear us say that all the time. If you're focused on what they are thinking, doing, and feeling, then your focus is on them. So, so this is what that looks like. I was in the addictive energy. My person could be downstairs working or he could go to the store. And I was like, I wonder, if he's messaging someone right now. I wonder if he's on Twitter right now. I wonder if he is on Twitter, who's he's writing to. I wonder where he's going for work and when he's gonna be back. Is he really going where he says he's going or is he going somewhere else? Is he gonna make another stop and not, and not tell me about it? If you guys sort of feel this, you feel the addictive energy within this. It is very obsessive. It is identifying as the stories. The st I was getting lost in the stories that mine was creating. I was getting lost in the fears that mind was creating. So that was prior to separation. Now, while we were in separation and he was living in an apartment, I remember all like before I was balancing, this is where the mind went. It was like, I wonder if he's having anyone over at his apartment. I wonder what he's doing right now. I wonder if he's walking down the halls and meeting some beautiful woman that lives by him. I wonder when he goes to work, if he's going out after work, if he's going out with friends. I wonder when he said he met some neighbors, were there women involved? Are the women bringing friends up? There was a lot of external stories. And that's sort of how I was in that separation phase before I balanced and brought it back to me. So what does it look like to bring the energy back to you? What does it look like to be in this balancing phase two energy where we can permanently maintain our connection with our person? It is when he goes out now, I don't give it any thought. I don't give it any thought. He's going out somewhere and it's like, I, it, it's so hard to even express it because I don't give it any thought. There are no stories attached to when he says he's going to the store okay, I'll see you when you're back. And the next time my mind focuses on him is literally when he walks back through the door with the groceries. I don't fall into the trap of the mind spheres and stories anymore. Instead, he leaves and goes to the store and is like, what am I doing right now in this moment? Where am I at right now in this moment? What am I doing? What am I focused on? And I keep it focused on that. That is how you stay focused on yourself. You stay focused on the present moment. And Joanne, you like to share that when you're in the present moment, look down at your feet. If your feet are the only one in your present moment, then that's what you should be concerned with. Don't think about your person if their feet are not next to you, because if you are focused on your person and their feet are not next to you, then they are not in your present moment and therefore you're in mind. And that's really what it means. It's really as simple as when you are focused on them, your mind is creating stories and lost in the stories of what are they thinking, doing, and feeling right now. And when you're focused on you, you shut down those stories, you shut down those fears, and you bring it back to what am I doing right now? What am I doing? And for a lot of you that might still be in that, in that energy where you are 
pushing out externally, it's okay. But I do want to share with you that there is this transition where I, I'm telling you, my loves, it's not going to focus on them anymore. The mind is going to know that you will not dive deep in those stories anymore. And it's not going to even go there because you've shut it down so many times and you have transitioned yourself to bring it back to the present moment that this won't even be an issue once you're balanced. So I want you guys to feel into the balance energy and what Elizabeth is saying is a permanent shift. So when she's going over what mine would do, I was totally the same way, my loves. I want you guys to understand it from from how my energy was and how it transitioned to this permanent relating experience to where I never, ever, 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 ever <laughs> put my focus onto them anymore. And I can't like, I seriously just sitting here right now. So I'm about to go do my run. We just hung up on, on our conversation and our call, right? I, I literally was just telling him I'm going to go on a run. Okay. As soon as we hang up, he's out of my he's out of my current experience right he's not talking to me and he's not in front of me therefore he is not in my now moment and so what my mind likes to do i'm sure all of your mind likes to do is it thinks about our people all the time and the focus is what they're doing thinking and feeling when you internally energetically shift to where you no longer worry about what they're doing, thinking, and feeling, and you're worrying about what you're doing, thinking, and feeling, you're putting all your focus and attention to you. Because if you put your focus and attention to them, they run. If I hung up on the phone with my person and all I did was think of him during my run, <laughs> he wouldn't want to see me after my run. And I would never do that. I can't do that anymore. My mind will just be watched, right? That's the difference. My mind is not me. I am not the mind. So the mind can think of my person and I'm going to bring my focus back to this now moment where I could see the pond that I'm running next to, the birds that are singing next to me, the trees that's swaying, the dogs that's passing by and family and kids that are, are playing. That's my present moment. It's an internal shift to where I see the mind wondering what they're doing while I'm running, but my present moment is soul. And that's where I belong. The mind will always focus on our people because, so in the permanent relating experience, now that when you're in the same energetic shift, right? The shift of that's not me, that's mine, I am soul. But because you are interwined as one, that is why you get the knowings of your soul. This is why so many people get downloads of what their person is actually doing, feeling, right? But it doesn't matter. Your focus is still your present moment. When you look at your feet, you're looking at your feet, right? You're placing your feet on the ground. If there's no other two feet next to you, which is your person's feet, your focus is on yourself. And even if their feet was next to me, I still don't care about what they're doing, thinking and feeling because I'm just present with them and my feet. <laughs> if I look at them, focus on them, wonder what they're doing, thinking and feeling, looking at their feet, again, they'll pull because there is that energetic connection between your soul. You guys are one. The more and more you focus, and what I mean by focus is shift your attention to yourself, to your feet, and look for their feet. Whether they're in front of you or not, the mind is looking for your person's feet to try to get them to stand next to you, try to get them to call you, try to figure out what they're doing, thinking, and feeling right now if they're not next to you. And you're still looking at them through that separation consciousness. Because even though I'm at the park, even though I'm going to run, even though I will not be with my person, I really feel our oneness. Like I feel our oneness so deep and so pure that I don't need to call him again just to make sure he knows that we're one. I don't even need to talk to him again. 
if this was our last conversation and I'm going to cancel, cancel, you guys know me, <laughs> we are the creator of our now moment. But if this was our last moment, and again, I'm going to say cancel because obviously we have forever. I would be okay because I don't need to have the conversations. I don't need the physical touch. I don't need anything from my person to know that we are one. We are Joanne. one internally. Yeah. Go ahead, love. I think what you just said resonated in such a different way. When we say all the time, when we say, if I don't, if I'm never with my person again, why we'd be okay. Let me explain why we'd be okay. And it just came to me. It's because we don't think about what they're thinking, doing and feeling like we did back when we were in the obsessive energy. So if they weren't in our present moment anymore, if they were to be, if they were to be gone, if they leave or if something happens, God forbid, cancel, 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 we wouldn't, our mind wouldn't go there anymore. It wouldn't be constantly yeah. ruminating on them. So that's why we are able to be okay. So when we say that, we say that with pure, pure authenticity, we would be okay because our minds aren't, they don't go there anymore. The energy doesn't go there anymore. No. And it's not that the mind doesn't go there. I think the mind is constantly going to our person. It's that we are not our mind. We are the watcher of the mind that wants to go to our people. We're watching the mind and we're not entertaining the mind and telling the mind, oh yeah, I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he's doing. I wonder if he's thinking of me. I wonder if I meant anything to him. I wonder if our interactions meant anything to him. I wonder what he was thinking when we were together. I wonder if he wants to contact me now. I wonder why he hasn't contacted me, right? There's a list of things that the mind does. But you as the conscious one is able to watch those thoughts, allow them to be released through you, and be present in the now. But majority of people, because this is this is that those phases. So I really want you guys to look at our community. This is where you get the actual step by step on where you may be in your energy with your twin flame. And everyone can shift in their energy depending on where they're at. I mean, seriously, me and Elizabeth have helped clients from when they were in dark night and we were able to guide them all the way to permanent relating experience. So it's not that no one, like not everyone can get there. It's that it doesn't matter if you met your person yesterday, if you you met your person 10 years ago, it's your energy. Where's your energy at? Where is your energy at now? And how can you shift your energy to the place where your energy is focused on you? And there's two huge, huge, Huge shifts in this journey. The first shift is when you're focusing on your person during separation. If you're focusing on your person during separation, there's two phases. One phase is you're focusing on your person during separation and they're not in your space. You can continue to loop in that stage. And that's a very addictive stage. It's an addictive stage. A lot of people get stuck on and I believe me, my loves, I was there. Elizabeth was there. If you guys look at our community, there's a detailed post on separation phase one, which is focused all on your person. It's all on your person. And I literally got a hit off of just living through the social media, just seeing that we can message each other anytime, even though he never reached out during that, that separation phase, just knowing that his little emoji guy, his face, <laughs> his little thing there showed me that he was on the other side, showed me when he's online was enough for the mind to get a hit. And that was me knowing that my energy was going to them. Well, that phase, my love, a lot of people get stuck on and they get lost on and they actually won't be able to shift through that separation phase focus on their person until they start internally shifting within themselves, right? So you're in separation, your focus is 100% on your person. I know it's crazy. It's like you're watching your energy just go to them with without really like controlling it because you didn't even know you were doing it, right? You've just consumed all day, every day. You could be going for a walk, you could be getting a massage and the mind is like, your person, your person, your person, your person, your person. And you're not doing anything to stop the mind's thoughts of your person, your person, your person. And then you realize this is crazy. What am I doing? I'm going to focus on me and I give all my focus and love and attention to what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. 
So the question that this beautiful soul is asking is, give me an example of what it looks like to put all your focus on yourself. Anytime your mind goes to your person and you are entertaining the mind by not looking at the thoughts and reminding yourself you are not the mind and that you are your soul and you realign back to the now and you make this present moment more of a priority than what happened in the past or what happens in the future with your person and your focus, attention, and energy is still going to your person. It's hard freaking work. This is an internal deep work to focus on yourself. It's easier said than done. And so if it took me like 5,000 times, my person's not with me, I'm gonna focus on myself, I realign and I'm present in the now, right? I did that. Five minutes later, it goes to them again. I'm doing it again, I'm doing it again, I'm doing it again, but I get it, my loves. You can get tired, you can get frustrated, and you can go back to sleep. And you can go back to sleep in the energy and just let your energy take over the obsessive energy take over and then next thing you know your mind's going to your person over and over again and you're allowing yourself to believe you're the mind and now you've completely fed the mind with addictive energy agreeing with the thoughts that is focused on your person so that's that separation phase one where the focus is a hundred percent on your person and then we shift internally where we realize Okay, this journey is not about my person. I have to make it about me. And you're making those conscious. It's a conscious effort. It's a conscious effort. This this internal shift doesn't just happen with you just focusing on your person and being an addictive energy. You have to keep focusing on you, bringing your focus on you to where you no longer let the mind control your connection. Remember, every time your mind focuses on your person, You are the conscious one watching the thoughts, becoming present of the thoughts, being present in the now, and bringing yourself back into the moment in front of you. You're shifting yourself back to the now, shifting back to the now. And it doesn't matter that your person was in your thoughts. That's not the issue. It's going to do that all day. I told you guys, in the permanent relief experience, my mind still does that. But the difference is you get to stay conscious and watch those thoughts that keeps wanting to go to your person and you reshift yourself back to now. It's a conscious, conscious effort. I see those thoughts, it's making it about my person. This journey's not about my person, this journey is about me. I'm going to be present. I'm going to watch these thoughts. I'm gonna sit with them and be with them. Remind my thought that I am soul, be present in the now. And it's a shift. You just keep shifting back. Keep shifting back to the now, back to the now, back to the now. But your mind will go there. And when you shift back to the present moment, your consciousness raises. So that is how you're able to shift internally to the next step where you're focusing on yourself because you keep bringing yourself back to this present moment. So your consciousness is raising and you get to now watch it. So that's how you know you're shifting. When you guys are listening to me and you realize, holy crap, I totally do that. I totally watch the mind and and see it and then bring myself back. Like, why was I thinking of them? I'm getting a massage. Let me enjoy my freaking massage. Why was I thinking of them while I was dancing with friends? Let me dance and feel my feet and feel my hands and, and the music in my ears. Be very present with the moments in front of you, even when the mind goes to your person. And that shift internally, if you guys look at separation phase two, you shift internally because you're done. Like you don't give an F anymore. You've hurt too much. You've been in mind too much. And now you're going to focus on you to the extent that even if the mind goes to your person, you're not going to entertain it. And you're going to keep focusing on your thoughts about your now moments. I see those thoughts about my person focusing on the past and future. My person's not in front of me. I'm going to look at my feet. I'm going to look at what's in front of me. I'm going to look at my feet. I'm going to look at the senses that are being presented to me and what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. If you can't touch your person in the now, they're not in your senses now, and you're thinking about your person, 
You're not giving yourself the focus and energy that you need to make it about you. If you're focusing on your person and you can't touch your person right now, your energy is going to them. It's mental, metaphysical, or emotional. So you see your person in your mind, you watch it, you allow it to come through you, and you're present in the now. You're, you're focused on your ascension. Like you are with your person, but your person really is, I, I can't, I don't want to even say an extension of you because it's not like that. It's very, very, it's, you're, you're waking up every single day and you're wondering, how do I get deeper in myself? How do I get deeper in this journey? How do I get deeper in my spiritual growth? How do I detach from the mind? How do I detach from the stories? How do I get to this place where nothing touches me anymore? How do I get to this place where I don't judge anything at all anymore, where anything can happen and I don't see it as good or bad. I just see it as part of my path to get to where I need to be and I'm in acceptance of it fully and wholly. And your person's always there. Your person's always there. Again, notice how I put all that emphasis on all those things that that I'm focused on, but my person's always there. My person's always there. And you see how I'm sort of making that sort of this minor thing? Because that's how it feels when you're in balancing to and beyond. You are so focused on how to get deeper in self, but your person's always there. Your person's always there. <laughs> that's how yeah. it feels. That's it's how it after. Feels. It's after you. It's after your soul's focus. Your person is there, but you don't care they're there because your focus is for you to align with soul, to get deeper in yourself. It's a deep internal shift. And we can't, we can't like bring you there. You, you, you have to shift internally to get there. And it's something that isn't going to be overnight. It's going to be deep in our work. This is where spiritual stamina comes in because as soon as your person comes in, guess what happens guys after separation? <laughs> A phase two, balancing phase one makes it about your person again. And until you get to that internal shift that Elizabeth was talking about, where balancing phase two comes in, where you're making it about you again, and not your person, you get to this place where you never worry about your person. Your mind might get there, but again, like I said, you're not your thoughts. You are the watcher of the thoughts. And even though... It sounds weird right now. That's where those shifts come. That's where your consciousness increases. Me saying that I can now watch my thoughts is me being so in tune with the mind's energy and so in tune with soul's energy that I can watch it instantly now and be like, why is my mind doing that? And it's okay if it takes like an hour to finally catch it, but that's that internal work. And so the hour that you caught yourself being in mind would have been like months, weeks, years for some people. The shifts are internal to you and what you're doing with the thoughts. Because it's really, let's get real up. All of you guys, it's easy to let the mind take over and go back to sleep. It's really easy to do that, to just ruminate. Because our people is us and it's addicting. And so it's like, you know what? I'm just going to chill today. I'm just not going to work on this internal stuff. I'm not going to work on the soul alignment stuff. I don't even know what the heck this is. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to let the mind do what it does. Your soul is not going to let you get stuck in the mind's energy. You know why? Because your soul is going to bring you all these experiences. That's going to make you get deeper from signs, synchronicities and people, situations that make you get deeper in yourself and then you go back and you work on it again internally. So the shift to focus on yourself is a conscious shift. You have to really watch the thoughts. You have to consciously realign to soul. It's not going to get done for you. This isn't a one and done thing. I, I would say we're always ascending. Because even me and Elizabeth in our permanent relating experience, we have moments where we like have these deep shifts and, you know, I'll have a deep, ugly cry. And it's like, what the heck? I thought I'd be better with this by now, but it never ends. It's, it's, it's just a way to keep getting deeper in soul and more egos of shedding that needs to be released. I totally had an issue, not an issue, but like over the weekend, 
I had a moment where I was watching the mind, was watching the mind, watching the mind. And my person, oh my gosh, this is like a huge download for all of you guys. My person was giving me such a hard time that I was not understanding that I was in mind. And remember, our people don't know how the, this connection works. They don't, they don't know anything. All they know is that when we're in mind about them, they pull. So my person and me were having a, a, a conversation where I was just so frustrated and I was in mind about them. I didn't realize it till later. And he was saying something like, it's hard to be around you when you are like this. I don't like to be around you when you're like this or something like that. And in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm in mine and I'm pushing on him. And when I calmed down and I realigned with soul, he's back in my space again, of course, you guys know how it works. And he's so drawn to me where he's like sniffing me. I know it's weird. <laughs> he's like sniffing me. And I said, because I like to investigate on this energy. I said, why are you so quick to run and pull when I'm mad? Really, that's how I asked. But I know it wasn't just me being mad. It was me being in the addictive energy of mine about them. I was in mind about them for sure. I wanted them to do certain things for me, for the house, so that I can be um, at peace which is crazy because I'm looking for him to fix me. So he's back in my space again. He's sniffing me. <laughs> and I said, what, how do you shift? Like, how do you get like this? Why are you like this now? And he said, you changed. He said, you changed. And I don't know why we were talking about batteries, but I was explaining to him, like, it's like for some reason when my energy goes to, and now I understand it's mine, when my energy goes to mine, it's like we both can't be in the same space. And my person, he uses the word masculine and feminine. I, I already told you guys that. For some reason, he's using those damn words. I don't know where he gets it from. I, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't watch our channel. He sees it. He's, on, he's subscribed to it. But I know he's not watching it or at least not watching enough to know what's going on. And he said, if you're trying to be masculine I get it I, I'm trying to make sense of what he was saying if you're trying to be masculine because I like to do everything if he doesn't help me out with the house and everything I do it I do everything I take over I, I don't even want to talk about it I'm just like whatever he's basically explaining that when I'm the doer I'm the masculine he doesn't want to be in the face with me and then when I surrender and release and I kind of just chill back and let him lead because that's what he said he said there has to be a space where I can lead. I can, I can, I do, I do, let me do. And that's where I surrender. I kind of just chill. That's where he's sniffing me again. And he said, if we're both trying to be the masculine, then we both will repel each other. And I was just like, what the hell? And I swear I put it in my notes because <laughs> he's sounding like how we talk. But really, in the journey, yeah, go ahead, love. It makes sense because think about your birthday. And for those of you that don't know, Joanne, we did a whole video on her birthday. For mm -hmm. her birthday, she was like, what are we gonna do? Like her mind was like, well, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And then when she surrendered, her person did everything. Her person scheduled a whole vacation for them, like same day, seriously. Yeah, and he did. for this thing, if you were in the point of, what are we gonna do for my birthday? How are we gonna plan? Da, 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 da. He wouldn't have been able to do because you were then in that doing mode. Yeah. He's basically saying, let me do. And and you know what's crazy is anytime I'm doing, he's like out of the picture. He like stays asleep. He just really stays the F away from me. And then when I realize, oh crap, I'm doing, I'm not trusting soul. Are you in mind when you're doing it? I, I, I'm saying this because I'm trying to picture like I myself. Am. I'm totally yeah. in mind because while okay. I'm doing, so, I have a list and I'm knocking out the list and I'm mad at him because I'm doing so, the list. So right yeah, there, right there, mind. right there, at right there. So I want, I want people <laughs> to understand. I want people to understand the energy of why it's pushing. It's because you're doing and while you're doing, it's sort of like, why the heck am I doing this alone? Why aren't they doing yeah. this with me? Why aren't they helping me? I want yeah. you guys to see. It's not that Joanne's just doing everything this and that. It's that while she's doing it, she's resentful of doing it yeah. and she's in that lower scale of consciousness. Oh yeah. It's like simple, simple things. I just get really upset with why it takes so long for them to do 
when he, okay, so he wants to do, well, he's not doing, well, he's not going to do when I'm trying to do. He's going to step the hell away. He's not going to be interested in doing when I'm doing. He's basically told me, because we were talking about the battery. He, he really like showed it to me visually in my head. He's like, if you're trying to do, and I'm, if you're trying to be the masculine and I'm the masculine, then we're both going to repel each other and we're both going to cancel each other out. And I can't do with you. I cannot do with you. I have to do, and you just trust that I'm going to do. And I, I didn't trust. I, I couldn't trust. It's like the day's already started. Are we going to go? What are we going to do? Like what, what's happening when the more I keep pushing on doing, he's never going to start. And I really want you guys to feel this because I, this just came to me. So this is for all of you. This is majority of divine feminines. We want our people to do, we want our people to lead the connection. We want our people to contact us. We want our people to plan dates. We want our people to marry us. We want our people to have kids with us. It's so much freaking doing that they can't even start. They cannot even start doing for us because we're so busy trying to to do and there's so many divine feminines too that say you know if i didn't do anything we wouldn't even get anywhere if i didn't contact him we wouldn't get anywhere if i didn't do this we would and that's not true that is absolutely not true you're right we we get that all the time for people we like do. well i'm the one who always has to initiate and we're telling you right now my love the reason no. you always have to initiate is because you're initiating but if you stop initiating they're going to be the ones that because i used to feel that same way like i mm -hmm. i think i told you guys when I would text my person, it would be like a freaking novel and he would do like one word sentences back, right? Pretty much. And I would look at those texts and I'm like, why does this feel so off balance? And it's because I kept trying to take the lead. I kept being the first one to text him. It was like my energy of, hey, remember me, remember me, here I am. I want you to know that I'm here. <laughs> and that was sort of the energy I was pushing out. And he couldn't then initiate because I was already smothering him with my energy. Like I was yeah. so needy in that energy. And it's like, once I stopped and we, you guys hear it all the time from us, Joanna and I don't reach out to our people. We don't text no. our people unless it's like something like you're going to the store. Hey, can you pick this up? Otherwise yeah. we don't. And it's because we don't need anything from them. So they're the ones who keep coming and coming and coming and coming <laughs> and initiating mm -hmm. and initiating and initiating even now. Yeah. If the mind wants to do, you're pushing your person away. Because I definitely was pushing my person, even a permanent relating experience. He's not going to leave the house. He's never going to get to that space because I'm never going to push as much. My push is still not to the extent it ever was before. And it's never going to ever go there. But my point is these downloads that I'm receiving and hearing from my person who is permanently in my life telling me you cannot be the masculine. You cannot be the one that does. Because when you do, I can't move. I can't move with you when you're too busy trying to do. I can't do with you when you're trying to take over. I swear, I'm I'm hearing him say these things. Hold on, Joanne. Like, yeah. I want to reemphasize. It's not that he's saying you can't do anything. It's saying you can't do anything and be in this low toxic energy. Because that's what yeah. he's feeling. He's feeling oh, the resentful yeah, sure. energy. I was very angry and spiteful and, and like in the lower vibration doing. And you're right, love, because I can do. So let's say I do stuff for the house. I do stuff for the kids and I'm high vibing. He's calling me the whole time. He's telling me I want to be with you when you're doing all this stuff. I told you guys, as soon as I shifted my energy, he's sniffing my hair. It's so weird. It's like he's getting a whiff of himself through my balanced energy. He's so addicted to our energy. And it's only when I'm in soul. When I'm not, he's so far away, he can't even be in my space. When I'm in soul, he comes crawling right back because it's so consuming. The way we consume ourselves on their energy, they want it the same way when we remember who we are. We are soul. We are the beer. We are not the doer. The doer is soul. That's why they do the doing. Our soul does the doing. Our person's right there and I could totally do, but I wasn't doing in that state of soul. I was doing with anger <laughs> and frustration and I was almost at the place where I, I, that's why it's not push because I was in anger, which is still not really push. It's like, cause I was wondering, he was still around me. He just wasn't doing anything for us. 
And when he said those things to me, where he was saying, I can't do when you're trying to take, like he can't be in the same space with me when I'm in this toxic energy. It's a really low vibration. And when we think that we have to do, we're pretty much telling the universe we don't trust it. I don't trust that my person's got this. I don't trust that my person's gonna come to me when I'm in soul, right? That's what a lot of you guys are saying to me. If you're saying I'm the one that has to do, you're telling me you don't trust that you're in a twin flame connection. If you're gonna do, then you're in a soulmate connection. And if that was a soulmate connection, then the doing would have worked. But you all know, as soon as you do, they pull. You might get a call, you, you might get a conversation, but they're out as soon as you're back in mind again. Everything is about you and aligning and reshifting back to you. What am I doing? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? When it goes to your person, you bring it back to you. And that's to totally what I was doing. That lower scale of, of energy I was in, it was all about him. Because if I was in the higher scale and my person was in like my, my thoughts, I wouldn't think of him separate. Energy of shifting from neutrality and above, I wouldn't need my person to do anything. He doesn't need to be in my space. I don't need him to do anything for me to be whole. I release that again and I go back to my feminine. I go back to the being and I'm no longer doing. So really what my person was saying was you're in the lower scale and raise your energy back to soul. You're in mind, get back to soul. If you're in mine, I can't be in your space. We will repel each other. He was saying that. We're gonna repel each other. Because if you're in mine, and you're pushing this energy on me, I can't, I can't do. Our people can't do when we're pushing the energy of mine to them. And so release the restraints of that you have to do anything for your person because when you're even trying to think of doing, you're already pushing it away. I know this video got really, really deep. I felt like all of these things that you guys were asking on how to shift your energy and how to get deeper in your connection, really the deeper you make this about you and last need for your person to do anything, then the moment that's in front of you now the more your connection will thrive. I seriously, as soon as I realized I was pushing, I closed my eyes and I just released and I surrendered. And the shift is so quick. He came right back, came right back, right next to me. And was like, it was almost like he was saying, you're back. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Even though we think our people is back, we literally are back. We came back into soul. We came back and realigned. We came back to remember who we are. I remembered my places to be and I'm not to do. I remembered to realign back to the moment in front of me. The internal shifts of making it about you is an internal shift that you consciously have to make. Because the example that I gave you guys, that was a conscious decision to be like, oh, oops, I was in mind, let me get back to soul. Oops, I was in mind, let me get back to soul. I think what a lot of you are wondering and hoping is, does it do it on its own? It won't. You being conscious is not going to do it on its own because you've been conditioned to be in mind. So it's going to take conscious efforts to bring yourself back. Now, the more present you are, the more you align with soul, the more you're raising your consciousness. Absolutely, my loves. It's gonna be so natural. It's gonna be so natural. Like me and Elizabeth, we don't even really sit down and meditate as much anymore because we're literally meditating all day. We are a walking meditation. And because of that, we are consciously watching the mind. We're consciously not the mind. We're consciously soul. So it's a conscious effort to align with soul and be present. And the attention and focus is on what you are doing, thinking, and feeling. And so I know this video was really deep and I know this question was really good. So if you have to watch this video again and again and again, just like you have to watch the mind over again, again, and again, you're being it right. 
my love, because this is something that we were not born naturally to sustain, right? If we were born and we were naturally, intuitively guided to listen to soul, all the mind thoughts would just be watched. But we were conditioned from birth to school to use mind, memorize, and and like be there eight hours a day, mind, 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 mind. Until we woke up, we finally realized, holy smokes, I'm soul, and now I have to watch the mind. Now I'm gonna watch the mind. Now I'm gonna remember I'm soul. I'm going to consciously stay in soul. And that's how the shifts happen. It's from your internal work to keep focusing on you soul and bringing it back to you as soul we love you so much we hope you guys all have an amazing amazing freaking day this video is awesome my love this video like, like i keep saying it i'm never gonna stop especially in the 20 new year 2024 this is like by far one of our best videos love and i'm pretty sure i'm gonna say it every time we make a video because we literally pull pour all of our love energy and like soul love energy to every single one of the things that we do for all of you we love you guys bye love bye love